how close is the world, at least, or maybe the United States, to running out of viable storage? We believe uh, that's not too far out into the future. Um, it's true. The United States does have uh, most of the remaining uh, onshore storage capacity within its country. Uh, so I think what we will see now is a gradual, uh, in, in phases, uh, various places of the world running out of storage capacity, the viable practical storage capacity, during the coming weeks, during May. Uh, and also, the United States may run out of its practical storage capacity uh, during May, and especially uh, in, in Cushing, you know, the delivery point of the NYMEX contract. Yeah, and that's one thing our, our viewers have really learned about the industry is that contract that we quote, that price for oil is really just oil priced in a tiny little town on northeast of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Bjornar, what happens? If indeed that storage fills up, I mean, what's that day look like when people simply have no place to put it? Well, I think we actually saw uh, the early warning signs of what that might look like actually already last week when the May contract expired uh, or the day before the expiry actually, when we saw these negative prices for, for the May contract uh, trade at the end of the day. Um, essentially, when we run out of physical storage capacity uh, and also expected uh, takeaway uh, possibilities for crude that's due to be delivered at a specific point, uh, in this case, uh, Cushing, Oklahoma, uh, during one month, um, is essentially the, the market breaks down. Uh, essentially, the seller needs to pay the, the buyer. Uh, to take that oil off uh, of the seller's hands because uh, simply it's too expensive to uh, to take that oil uh, at you know a, a positive value so that is what we saw uh, the early warning signs of and that we believe might also necessarily be the case for the june contract because the difference between supply and demand is still so that we are accumulating uh, crude into storage into the united states still uh, and we actually today yeah. might see the report of, you know, all time high U.S. crude commercial storage levels when the EIA reports its numbers at, uh, at 430 CET. Yeah, okay. T two questions then, I guess, which are incredibly basic, but, but I keep getting them, Bjorn, or I don't have an answer, so I'm going to ask you, which is, given that, why have we seen prices firm up a little bit in the last 24 hours, and why the heck... Given the storage situation you just outlined, why the heck do people keep taking oil out of the ground? That's a very good question. Um, essentially, we at Rice that we also are a bit skeptical to this little rally uh, and, and uh, exuberance positive um, sentiment wave that we're now seeing uh, started yesterday and continuing today. Because, um, you know, okay, there, there has been some positive news about the prospects for oil demand, you know, from Europe, uh, when it comes to opening up from the COVID-19 lockdown measures gradually in Spain and, and France, for instance, during the middle of May, and also early signs that that could be possible in the United States as well. So, of course, there is uh, positive um, news about a, a recovery at some point soon. But it's uh, still a physical constraint here in the oil market where we are still producing a lot more than the refineries globally are still uh, consuming the crude oil.